Shane Van Gisbergen is back in NASCAR once again, this time at Indianapolis Road Course. Driving for Trackhouse Racing, they're ready to embarrass the Cup Series field once again, lining up alongside more global road course ringer stars like Jensen Button and Kamui Kobayashi. But the man effectively known as Shane Van Ginsenberg. Shane Van Ginsenberg. Ginsenberger? Something burger? Um, Ginsenberger? Gin Ginsenberger? Will surely be targeting victory lane again at the famous track. But SVG might not be back in the 91 just for another one race stand. With rumours swirling about their future in Australian V8 supercars, a future racing in the United States is looking increasingly likely. So today, we're going to see if the Cup Series first time winner has what it takes over a full season to embarrass Chase Elliott and co and win it all. Van Giersbergen's win in Chicago may have been considered something of a flash in the pan, given the torrential rain and subsequent delays to the race. But it wouldn't be fair to attribute the victory to any particular one of the circumstances. While the regular field may have been at a disadvantage racing a new and untested circuit in difficult conditions, let's not forget that Van Gisbergen was in the same boat. It's difficult to race a formula when you have less than six total hours in the car when you're riding up on the grid, and even more so to be competitive. So while yes, SVG is more used to street racing than the entire field combined, there is also a big difference in traction in a cup car compared to the manufacturer-backed V8 beasts that they race down under. We saw at Turn 11, when William Byron spun out trapping Kevin Harvick and Corey LeJoy behind the 24 and piling up half the field behind them. We saw that these aren't mistake-prone names that struggle in Chicago. It illustrates the difference in adaptability and skill between the regular season Cup Series field and the man from Auckland, New Zealand. When they got into the 91 for their first laps in anger, Van Gisbergen qualified third in Chicago and posted a lap time that had them only 0.153 off of the pole. To evaluate SVG's pace in the rain shortened Chicago race, we're going to compare them to some of the better road course runners in the field to see where he stacks up. Specifically, we're going to compare them with the third place car of Hendrick Motorsports golden boy, Chase Elliott. Driving the nine, Chase enjoyed a good run in Chicago. He battled his way from 26th to third and collected 34 championship points, which is a far better result when you consider that they hit the wall in turn two immediately after exiting the pits. And at the time, they had been running 11th. Chase ran well enough to salvage a top five following the incident, but we can see in their lap times that they had been hindered enough to struggle afterwards. Their fastest lap was a one minute 31.048, two seconds slower than Van Giesbergen's, and two miles an hour slower as well. And when you evaluate the positional data throughout the race, Van Gisbergen maintained a more steady progression through the field. So even though Chase was consistent throughout the race, they failed to make the gains required compared to Van Gisbergen. And that is something we can attribute to two key factors. The first is psychological, a mindset of racing. Gisbergen is used to running close to the walls on street circuits and turning both left and right within millimeters of the barriers. And as they say it down under, licking the stamp and sending it. SVG was more confident to compete on the day and more importantly, they were more confident to race on the new track. This was exemplified by their impressive battle with Justin Haley for the lead, pulling cutbacks galore and pushing the car to the absolute limit that the conditions allowed. SVG brings a unique driving style with their heel and toe braking, where the driver touches the clutch with the left foot and brakes with the right, but also squeezing the throttle with the right ankle at the same time. It's not so much of a secret weapon, given that this is the norm for every driver in V8 supercars, but it did enough to confuse Trackhouse teammate Daniel Suarez who dubbed it Kiwi Breaking. Compare this to Chase's performance, with the Hendrick driver clearly taking some time to get to grips with both the conditions and the new circuit, and it's plain to see why each driver finished in the respective positions they did. When we look at the average lap time from practice as opposed to the race, we can see that Van Gisbergen didn't make the top 10, while road course enthusiasts like Martin Truex Jr., Kyle Larson, and Daniel Suarez all made an impact. So this brings us to the second of the two points in the Van Gisberg and Elliott battle, that Shane simply had more talent on the day. Racing drivers, as we all know, have good days and bad days, but the attitude of the athlete from New Zealand really came into its own for the Chicago race. The 91 before SVG had been a cool idea and had run well enough earning some merit and attention, but when NASCAR started panicking as the heavens opened and everyone started wondering what would happen to the Chicago race, the underdog spirit took over. There was an opportunity, and Van Gisbergen went for it, all while the NASCAR Cup Series left themselves stunned, and while driving in an unfamiliar left-hand drive car, as Denny Hamlin pointed out. The cars, are they're not the same. They're not the same. They said he was shifting with the opposite hand. And so that, to me, it blows my mind. This is what I think is the key factor in the debate surrounding any potential 2024 title charge, should SVG come to the Cup Series full-time as rumored. 
Van Gisbergen has similar qualities to some of the top names in modern motorsports. Names like Max Verstappen or Kyle Busch, in the sense that they have an ability to dominate a moment, and when they're good, they're unbeatable. And don't forget, Van Gisbergen is already a proven champion. He's lifted the title in the V8 supercars three times. While everyone stands around talking about whether or not SVG in the 91 is a one-hit wonder, he'll be quietly figuring out where to improve. So when race day comes again, and everyone's wondering which Hendrick or Joe Gibbs or RCR driver will be at the front, all of a sudden SVG will have snuck into contention before anyone realises. And when the one small chance to get the lead arises, you bet they'll take it. Now this isn't to say that Shane can hop in a cup car and dominate on the ovals, like your New Hampshire's or your Richmond's, but in a championship that has more road courses than ever before, with Cota, Sonoma, Indianapolis, Watkins Glen, the Charlotte Roval, another Chicago street race, if possible, a return to Road America if fans get their way, road course ringers are almost 25% of all the entries in cup. So if SVG can run mid-pack aiming for top 10 on the ovals, and be fighting consistently for top threes and wins everywhere else, there's certainly more than a small chance you could see him as a championship contender were they to run a full season. Ultimately, the future will tell us whether or not this pure speculation is utter nonsense, but I think there's legs to it. SVG's team managing director, Jamie Wincup, has already announced they wouldn't oppose Shane leaving to race full-time in the USA come 2024. Now, it takes more than just fancy footwork or a plucky attitude to be a NASCAR Cup Series champion, but then again, it takes that extra bit of talent and magic to be the first driver in NASCAR's modern era to win on their debut, and also while becoming the sixth non-American to head to the Cup Series victory lane. So Shane Van Gisbergen might have it, whatever it is. Only time will tell whether Van Gisbergen has what it takes to be a two-time Cup Series winner, and then subsequently a future champion. But I can guarantee their name is one you'll be hearing a whole lot more in the future regardless. Do you think SVG has what it takes to be a Cup Series champion? Let me know down in the comments. And if you enjoyed that video, Remember to like and subscribe, and if you want your say on what content I cover in the future, please consider donating to the link down below. But as always, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching, stay safe out on the road, and I'll see you next time. Lewis Hamilton, champion of all! You are Kanky, four times title holder.